Well, greetings and welcome to this video tutorial on estimating descriptive statistics using Excel. And within this tutorial module, we will focus on estimating measures of central tendency, including the mean, the median, and the mode, but also estimating measures of variability, including the variance, the standard deviation, and the range. Whereas we're building on a previous module in which um, the estimation of frequencies and graphs was demonstrated. And so first we want to get into our database that includes information collected across 99 individuals across different demographic variables as well as different achievement measures. And for the demonstration purposes here, we're going to focus on estimating measures of uh, variability and central tendency for our first test variable here. And so I have set up a little kind of table here with the variable name in the first cell here, our measures of central tendency, as well as our three measures of variability. This column here has the values already indicated. And so now we're just going to replicate these here um, for the purpose of this module. And so whenever we want to estimate equations or anything in Excel, we just want to click on the cell in which we want the value estimate to occur. And we just simply come up into the cell formula area and hit equal. And we're interested in estimating here the mean or the average. And again, which we saw in the previous module on frequencies, is we have this functions argument window. And the number one is we just highlight the cells that we want to calculate the average for. Once we've done that, we click OK. And here we get the mean. That's the mate, the median. The cell in which one us made equal to. And we just select from our drop down menu. In some cases, uh, the procedure we want to estimate is here. Sometimes it's not, so we might have to do more procedures. These are all statistical procedures. And here we're looking for the median. Click OK. Just like we did for the mean, is we just highlight the cells for this particular variable that we want the median for. Likewise then for the mode. And so it's just a very similar process is for you know here we're just focusing on one variable the first measure of academic achievement. And then we're going to estimate the variance. So really we're kind of us we we want to know what are the characteristics of the distribution on this particular variable. Then next is the standard deviation which will simply be the square root of the variance. And we can see we're clicking and hitting our values. The range on the other end is something that's a little bit unique because you're not going to see the option for it. So in this case, for the range, it's a case where you're actually going to have to enter the formula into Excel. And in this case, we're estimating the range, which is just simply the difference between the lowest and the highest score. And so to begin, we're going to need to sort that variable from smallest to largest. And so we can see the low score on test one is 13, which falls underneath cell H2. And we're going to subtract that. And you can see when you put the cell indicator in here, that label, it highlights that cell. But then we want to find the highest one, which is C is 38. And that is in cell H100. We've got our 8100. 
minus H32. So we see the two different cells are highlighted here. And if we just click then return, whoops, it's because we have the negative sign here. So you always want to check your formulas. <coughs> and we can see we have replicated our values here. And when you're reporting out the data, something you might want to do is just go only the two decimal places. So you can highlight the cells and then just format the cells. Instead of being a general category, we're going to make it a number with two decimal places. We just click OK. And so this reformats the cells, the numbers, instead of multiple decimal places, it just restricts it to two. Something else we might want to do is if we're looking at perhaps achievement differences across any kind of specific demographic group, such as sex, race, ethnicity, as language, is estimate the average score for each represented group in the data set. And in this case, maybe we want to focus on race. And if we sort race from smallest to largest, we see we have race values from one to a couple people with five, four, six. And so we're only going to focus on those with, you know, let's just say for two. So up, you only go up to a five because there's no reason to estimate the mean for one person in a group. And so we can do this just by, again, we have our, ta our table format as a table. And if we just want to do race one first, is now it's only going to show us the values for them. And we want to get our race groups, five. Actually, we want to get this stuff so we can actually see it. Copy. And put it right here below the table. That way we don't lose it. Is we want to first estimate the mean on first test for. Just the first group. And so within that we can do equal. We want the mean, and it's for the first test there. And then for the second group, so we want the average. And then we're just going to simply keep moving along. Estimate the average then. Whoops. For the first test. And then we're going to want for the fourth group. Do the average. And what this is going to allow us to do then is inspect the achievement across whatever designated groups that we're interested in learning more about in terms of how they're doing on this test. And we'll do, um, format this. So when you have two decimal places by right clicking, clicking number, two decimal places. And so here now we have for our race groups their achievement here. One thing we might want to do now is generate a graph. That will allow us to kind of inspect the scores graphically instead of in a table format. It depends on how you want to present the information to the reader. We're going to enter a column and a bar graph. And with this blank slate, we click Select Data. And we're going to add the series name.
And we can just keep adding in people scores. By adding in, we're adding another bar, and each bar represents another group. And we'll keep adding Oops. series name is going to be the name and the value. Looks like we need to edit this one. And then for the horizontal name, it's going to simply be our race values. Whoops. So here you can see then we have our different race groups represented, one through five. And again, there's other ways that we can modify this. We can have a, a graph in which we can have a t um, an x-axis label, like race, average score here. We can have one where we have a legend, the title that we can just go in and modify, such as average scores across race ethnic groups we can give this title average score and there's different ways you can modify and keep manipulating it you can manipulate the size and you can keep those grid lines or you can retain them there it all depends but it looks like the highest performing group was group one followed equally by groups four and five and so the purpose of this module then was to show you how you can estimate the measures of central tendency and variability using Excel the mean the median mode as well as the variance standard deviation the range but then also how you can manipulate the Excel file by using the table features to estimate average scores or frequencies for particular groups to make comparisons to more fully understand the data and which information was collected. This concludes this module on estimating measures of central tendency and variability using Excel.